Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. Welcome to part four of my series on quadratics. Today, we're gonna to look at quadratic inequalities. We're gonna address the basic foundations to the topic. Then we're gonna do a pretty cool modeling style question. So getting started on the actual skills-based stuff that you would have learned at GCSE is solve the following quadratics. So x squared plus 2x minus 15 is less than or equal to zero. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find out when is this quadratic equal to zero by factorizing. So we're going to have x and x. Now for 15 and to make 2, we're going to use 5 and 3. To make plus 2, we need plus 5 minus 3. So the roots would be x equals minus 5 and x equals 3. Now, I always recommend that you do a sketch. We always want to avoid making any silly mistakes. So x is minus 5 and x is 3. Just a very basic sketch here. Now, we want to know when is it less than 0. So when is the quadratic basically below the x-axis is here. And then we've got to write down what x values define the quadratic below the x-axis. And it's just these x values. We just point up to the x-axis, and then we just think of the x-axis as a number line. So it's any number between minus five and three. So your solution here is any solution between minus five and three, and make sure you have the equal to sign because in the question, it's equal to as well. Now for part B, the interesting thing about part B is that it's a negative quadratic, and we all know that we hate solving negative quadratics. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move everything to the other side so that they become positive. But here it reads it's less than or equal to zero, but when we move it to the other side, it will become bigger than or equal to zero. So when we move all of these terms to the other side, we get two x squared plus five x and then minus three is bigger than or equal to zero. And then we go ahead and solve. So we're gonna get two x and x. Now to make five x and we have three here, we're gonna need three and one. Then two x times three gives you six x, and one times x gives you x. So to make plus five x, we need this to be positive and this to be negative. So our roots here are x equals one half and x equals minus three. So when we sketch our quadratic, we're going to get a half and minus three. So basic sketch here of the quadratic. Now here we want to know when is it bigger than zero. So when is the quadratic bigger or above the x-axis? Then again, we just draw lines straight down to the x-axis. And then we treat the x-axis as a number line. So here is clearly anything less than minus three. And here, anything greater than one half. So anything less than or equal to minus three, and anything greater than or equal to one half is our solution. The final one, the most common thing students do for this kind of question is they just square root both sides. Then they say something like x is, well, they, it's a mixture, either x is between three and minus three, or x is bigger than three and less than minus three. But we wanna make sure that we get it right every single time. So it's best we move the nine over and factorize instead. It's difference of two squares, x plus three, x minus three is less than or equal to zero. So your roots here are x equals minus three and x equals three. So we sketch that, it is a symmetrical quadratic, minus three and three, going right through. And this time again, in fact, it's just less than. We wanna know when is the quadratic below the x-axis, which again, when we draw lines upwards, this is just where the graph is between minus three and three. So our solution, like part A, is between minus three and three, but it doesn't equal to the two numbers. So an exam type question, find the set of values of x for which four x minus three is greater than seven minus x. So the first thing we're gonna do there is just rearrange like any normal question. The negative x can come over to this side. Four x plus x is five x. 
then the minus 3 can go onto that side, so it'll become plus 3, 7 plus 3, 10, then divide by 5 on both sides, x is bigger than 2. The next one, part b, 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 is less than 0. We're going to again find our roots. So we have 2x and x. Now for 12, we have various options. We have 1 and 12, 2, 6, and 3 and 4. It definitely can't be 2 and 6 because they're both even numbers, and no even number can go in the first bracket. So it feels like it's going to be 3 and 4. I'm going to put 4 in here because 4 cannot go in the first bracket because it's even. 2x times 4 is 8x, then 3 times x is 3x. How do we make minus 5x? Then we need a minus 8x plus 3x. So our roots are x is minus 3 over 2, and x equals 4. And so when we do our little sketch, we have minus 3 over 2 and 4. So it's going to look something like this. And we want to know when is it less than 0. So that's the part of the quadratic below the x-axis. So we just draw lines up. And we can see the solution is anything between minus 3 over 2 and 4. And it can't equal the two numbers. For part C, it wants to know when what x values satisfy both what was in part A and what was in part B. So for this, we just use a simple number line. We plot out all the numbers, so we have minus 3 over 2, we have the number 2, and we have 4. The first solution was x is bigger than 2, and the other solution was anything between minus 3 over 2 and 4. So all we need to do is we need to well, we need to write down the x values which satisfy both of these lines. And we can see it's anything between 2 and 4. That's where the overlaps are. So our solution is anything between 2 and 4. A nice modeling style question says the diagram shows the outline of a book and its respective measurements. Given that the height of the card is to be at least 50% more than its width, show that x is less than or equal to 30. So this height has to be 50% more than the width, meaning if you take the width and you increase it by 50%, the height has to be at least that amount. Now, if you increase something by 50%, the multiplier is 1.5. So what we're saying is that the height of x plus 15 has to be at least, at least meaning more than or equal to 1.5 lots of the width, yeah? Which is actually x, not w. And then from there, we can go ahead and rearrange. So move this x over to this side, so we get 15 is greater than or equal to 0 0.5. Then we times both sides by two. So we get x is less than or equal to 30. Yeah, when you write it the other way around, you get the same as what they've got. Given also that the area of the front of the book is to be at least 250, find the set of values of x. So the area of this card would be x times x plus 15, and they're saying it has to be at least 250. Expand. And then we're going to move the 250 to the other side and factorize. Now, the easiest numbers we're going to try when we come to factorizing is 25 and 10, and that does work here. So we've got 25 and 10. And then what makes 15 is if we have plus 25 minus 10. And so when we do our diagram, the roots here are x is minus 25 and x is 10. So our graph looks something like this. Now, when is it less or when is it greater than or equal to zero? We're looking at this side and this side. So we're looking at x being less than or equal to minus 25 and x being more than or equal to 10. But we know x can't even be negative. So it has to satisfy x being bigger than or equal to 10. And from part A, x has to be less than or equal to 30. So what satisfies both? is if x is between 10 and 30, and you can see that if you were to do a number line. So that's it for quadratic inequalities. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're gonna look at 
how we deal with algebraic fractions and inequalities. So I look forward to seeing you guys in episode five. Peace.